Here is another thyroid. You could see a large nodule, maybe what, four to five centimeters, uh, cut in half and separated rather nicely and precisely from the surrounding normal thyroid tissue, which this is over here. Notice that the cut surface of this tumor is very uniform, and whereas there may be an area where there's kind of cystic degeneration, when you get through the more viable portions of the tumor, it cuts like a lymph node, very fleshy. It doesn't have this uh, larger, beefier, or follicular type architecture. Let's look at the uh, tumor uh, microscopically now. And here it is. Here is the normal surrounding thyroid follicles. Here is a very nice sharp capsule separating this tumor from the thyroid. And all of this is the tumor. Notice that in some areas you can see small follicles. Like here, like here, like here. And there's even a little bit of colloid in them. But notice for the most part, the uh, follicles are extremely small. So that's why this is called a microfollicular pattern of growth. So this is a microfollicular adenoma. Now, I will admit, these can sometimes be very difficult to differentiate from malignancies uh, microscopically. So once again, what you really have to do here is go to the edge of the tumor and look to see whether it is well encapsulated or not. I know that sounds kind of like a cop-out. You would think, well, geez, you know, you should be able to tell whether these tumor cells are malignant or benign just by looking at the nuclei. Well, let me tell you, you can't uh, often do that with thyroid. You have to look at how it's growing, how it's invading, whether it's invading or not, rather than what the cells look like from the high power point of view. Here's the microfollicular adenoma. Here's a nice sharp capsule separating it from these uh, normal uh, thyroid follicles on the other side of the capsule. Now we could spend a lot of time making sure this is 100% encapsulated, which will help with our diagnosis. Or we could just go to a couple more areas. Here are some very small follicles. Here are the normal size follicles of the normal thyroid. And here is the sharp capsule separating the two. Let's go to one more area. And if we went through this entire uh, edge of the tumor, uh, we would see that once again, here are the micro follicles, here's the capsule, and here is the normal thyroid uh, tissue on the other side. Now I know what you're thinking, you're saying, aha, well look, some of these follicles probably invaded the capsule, so that means this is cancer. Well look very closely, these are these little trapped follicles out here have no semblance at all to these microfollicular structures of the tumor. These apps uh, represent either traps or fibrosis around the normal thyroid follicles on the other side. If, however, you saw tissue like this very clearly going through or well into this capsule, then you could start to get worried. But uh, believe me, once again, on practically all these other tumors, we went to the nuclei, and I showed you features that looked either benign or malignant. And unfortunately, that rule often doesn't apply very easily with thyroid. Another thing I should have mentioned a long time ago is that even benign endocrine tumors, we saw this with pheochromocytoma and uh, parrot pituitary adenomas. The nuclei can be tremendously bizarre and still be totally benign. That's one classical feature of uh, endocrine neoplasms. This is a benign follicular adenoma of the thyroid.